You know, I've spoken to David Frum of The Atlantic recently and Gerard Baker, who was the Wall Street Journal editor and also the editor of the uh, T Financial Times, um, and Tim Alberta and Keith Boykin. And I've asked them all this question. That's, a, that's an impressive you know, uh, parade of people. Yeah. Well, we, we've had good discussions. I've so enjoyed, you know, as I put it to Jeannie, my wife, the other day, I said, you know, I'm so grateful for the fact that I get to talk to people I'm actually interested in and admire anyway for some thing. And I don't only talk to people who I happen to agree with you. I can't think of anything you've written where I'm saying, oh, I, I take a different view. But you're the exception. Usually I disagree with someone. But um, I wanted to ask you, what is the role of media in an age of information overload, because we are both working in that. And when I say overload, I mean just all this crap and there are no gatekeepers. So again, what is the role, what do you see as the role of media in an age of overload? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we're trying to build a community as well within conversation with Frank Schaefer and my podcast, it has to be said. And also now we have a book club, it has to be read. We're doing what we can. Um, tell the truth and share the truth. But again, what, what what is the role in media in this age of media overload? And how do you see your role in that? Yeah, well, I, th I think it's changed. I mean, if, if there was a time that it was um, uh, the sort of traditions of journalism that were very much about sort of neutrality and uh, uh, seeing the expression of truth by offering two sides to every issue. Yeah. Um, you know, we've reached a point where it's it's quite clear that there are you know, there are uh, at least two sides to every issue, but sometimes, you know, one side is right and one side is wrong. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, that that's one thing. If it's a minor thing, it's quite another thing if it's about, uh, you know, uh, you know, acceptance of America or the dissolution there therein of America. And so, you know, the I think the more fundamental role that journalists have is to tell the truth. Yeah. You know, that you don't you don't have to ask two people if it's raining outside, you go to the window and you look. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't have to go ask, is the house on fire? You go and see it for yourself. So so there there are truths to be found. And I think it's uh, um, in these times, you know, it's a responsibility to to articulate that. And, you know, it does lead me to focus on the big picture as much yeah. as I can, because I think the big issues are the ones that that do need to motivate the choices that people make and, and to help people make sense of a world that can feel increasingly uncertain and uh, overwhelming and, uh, you know, overly complex to just sort of find a way to be able to articulate it, to mm -hmm. frame it uh, so that it's uh, it's more navigable. So, mm -hmm. so I do think that journalists have that kind of responsibility. I think in this very particular moment, um, the most important thing is that when I read stories uh, by political journalists and they're treating the time that we're in as a political horse race between two political candidates, I'm, I'm, uh, and the likely two political candidates, you know, I'm, I'm continuously upset and offended by it because you know one is a criminal defendant with 91 felony charges who is plotting a fascist dictatorship, you know, and another one who, uh, you know, who accepts. Uh, democracy and and advocates for it and believes in the rule of law and uh, the sacred tradition of the peaceful transfer of power and uh, uh, enabling uh, you know every every uh, citizen to have the right to vote you know et cetera et cetera and um, I think there's a responsibility to to talk about that in as explicit and a vivid and uh, frankly continuous way. Uh, you know, um, uh, every, with every story, uh, not not to get lost in the routines of uh, how these, you know, kind of political stories typically historically uh, get covered. You know, th this is this is not that time anymore. Yeah, this is not an entertaining horse race. Yeah, it's yeah. a you know, I, I tend to say this isn't a, a political story this year. This is a crime story. Right. Yeah, and I think that's a brilliant way to put it. Thank you.